Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Thank you so much. So, Good afternoon, all of you. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Thank you so much. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome you all uh, for this um, international webinar on uh, production of uh, biomaterials, uh, collagen-based biomaterials for wound healing applications. Uh, so, I'm Ashok Kumar, uh, host of this particular webinar. Uh, I'm extremely happy to introduce the speaker, today's speaker, uh, Dr. P. Srinivasan. Uh, I'd like to introduce him very quickly, since he has a lot of achievements. I don't want to go in detail. Uh, maybe you can uh, search through uh, Google. That will tell you all the information. Uh, Dr. Srinivasan completed his uh, master's in Tharmani University of Madras in the Department of uh, Medical Biochemistry. After he completed his master's, then he moved to PhD uh, in the prestigious University of Madras, Gindi campus, Chennai, in the Department of Biochemistry. After completed his uh, PhD uh, in the area of uh, cancer drug development, especially on oral cancer, uh, then he moved to Korea for his first postdoctoral research. Mm -hmm. After uh, his completion of his first postdoctoral research in Korea, South Korea, then he moved to Taiwan. Uh, in the National Chengkung University, where he stayed there for uh, Chengkung University more than five years. Then he moved to this current affiliation, ACRO Biomedical Limited, uh, Co Limited, Company Limited, where past uh, six years he was working in that company as a research scientist. Uh, to come to his uh, research achievements, he has published more than 100 research and nearly 100 research and review articles and his citations around 4,000 plus, and he has 29 H index and 49 item index. So this will tell you uh, what kind of quality research he has uh, done so far. So with this brief introduction, I, along with that, he has patents also. So with this brief introduction, I invite uh, Dr. Srinivasan to share his, uh, the current research, what he is doing in the company. Definitely, this will be uh, helpful to the students and the research community. And if you have any questions, uh, keep it at the end. So he'll be happy to answer at the end. Now I'll, I'll hand out the uh, session to Srinivasan. So please. Is the screen visible? Yes, sir. Uh, screen is visible. Okay. Is the screen visible? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Oh, got it, got it. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, uh, thank you for the generous introduction by Dr. Ashok. And uh, it's an immense pleasure to share our research-related product uh, producing 
uh, supercritical carbon dioxide extraction technology for tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. And uh, our, our company was uh, founded in 2014 by Dr. Darren Shea. Uh, we fondly call him Dr. DJ. Our company is located in Kaohsiung Science Park, a south part of uh, Taiwan. Our company is uh, dedicated to research and development of natural collagen by a scaffold for tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. Uh, to credit our innovative uh, product development, we have received almost like 70 international patent, patents and more than 20 are still pending. Uh, when we have a, a strong, robust uh, R&D team, and, uh, which is a strong pillar of the company, and we published almost like more than 20 papers related to product development. And uh, we also received uh, medical approvals from different countries, three from USA, 10 from Taiwan, two from Singapore, four from Philippines, two from Vietnam, three from Thailand, one from India. Our company entered uh, Taipei stock market in July 2021. And these are the awards uh, we received for our innovative product development. And these are the product related publications. And these are the products uh, like Cornea, Collagen Matrix, Atlo Collagen, Organ Scaffold. And these are the journals we published. Uh, we collaborate with universities uh, research institutes and hospitals in Taiwan and US. And we publish papers along with our research work. And these are our recent publications uh, which we have done. Uh, our mission is to apply uh, biomaterial from animal resources to regenerate human defective tissues and organs. There might we ultimately grow into a global leader in tissue engineering and regenerative medicine field. One day people do not need to wait for donated tissues and organs and transplantation will be easy, easily available and affordable. Uh, before uh, we just go into the details of tissue engineering and regenerative medicine, we need to know some of the basics of uh, basic keywords such as biomaterial. Uh, biomaterial may be a natural synthetic used in medical applications to support, enhance or replace damaged tissue or, or a biological function. Uh, tissue engineering is a wide field of biomaterial development that combines tissue scaffolds, cells, and biologically active molecules into a functional tissue or regenerate damaged tissue or a whole organ. Uh, regenerative me medicine combines tissue engineering and also integrates self-healing where the body uses its own system to heal by itself with the help of uh, foreign biological materials such as animal tissue scaffold to recreate and rebuild tissues. The term tissue engineering and regenerative medicine is interchangeable as the field focuses on the cue as an alternative for the treatment of complex diseases such as diabetes mellitus where the wound healing doesn't heal very easily. The aim of tissue engineering and regenerative medicine is to create biological substitute to maintain, enhance or restore damaged tissues and organs. Uh, our company's uh, main business is tissue engineering and regenerative medicine where we produce tissue scaffold, tissue and organ scaffold for tissue engineering and organ engineering. Uh, we, we consider a supercritical extraction technology as a platform technology for the production of tissue scaffold. The three key elements of tissue engineering and regenerative medicines are cell, scaffold, and signal. Our uh, business, our accrual biomedical business is to produce the scaffold, natural scaffold for the tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. Scaffolds are biomaterials that offer support for the cell attachment and then successive development of the tissues and organs. As we know that uh, the tissue engineering regenerative mark, uh, market is steadily increasing with exponential growth. According to the Fortune Business Insights, the, the global regenerative market size is almost like 23.8 billion in 2018 and it is projected to reach around 151.9 billion by 2026 exhibiting a compound annual growth rate of 26.1% between 2019 and 2026. This is due to the shortage of organs and tissues and patients are waiting for that. Not many people are willing to donate the tissues and organs. So uh, this is the place where our company goes inside to produce tissues and organ scaffold. And this uh, map shows the shortage of organs and tissues in, uh, in the whole world. Less than 10% of the demands in that organ transplantations are met. More than 90% patient, patients are still waiting for the donated tissues and organs. And before going to the uh, the complete uh, 
collagen scaffold material we just see some of the basics of collagen at present 29 different types of collagen genes have been identified 25 to 35 percent of the uh, human body contains collagen which holds the body together and uh, the percentage of the collagen uh, depends upon the structure and the function of the collagen uh, important features of the collagen scaffold are uh, biocompatibility where uh, the collagen scaffold has a kind of a suitability for the host and biodegradability refers to the controlled degradation of the collagen, uh, collagen scaffold inside the human body and the mechanical property refers to the mechanical strength, yield strength and uh, uh, suturability, flexibility, everything. And collagen uh, scaffold architecture uh, mainly uh, refers to the uh, structural uh, features that are really important for the regeneration. And manufacturing technology, uh, most of the other companies produce collagen scaffold using detergents, acid, alkali, and enzymes. In our case, we use supercritical carbon dioxide extraction technology for the production of collagen scaffold. And the choice of biomaterial, which is very important because our company uh, aims to use only the counterpart of the tissue. For example, if the cornea is getting damaged, we use corneal scaffold for the regenerative uh, medicine purpose. And uh, this is the basics of uh, collagen. This is the basics. Uh, Uh, this is a basic collagen triple helix structure where multiple tropocollagen molecules accumulate to form a uh, microfibril. Multiple microfibrils are lined parallelly to form a fibril. And these fibrils are cross-linked by the amino acid hydroxyproline and lysine to form a, a fiber and the fiber from the fibril to form a collagen fiber. So uh, this is the basic structure of tropocollagen where you can find non-helical N and C terminal and helical part uh, in which this uh, non-helical uh, non N and C terminal was found to have greater interspecies variation whereas helical uh, the part has less interspecies variation and the amino acid sequence are similar to that of different species. And this non-helical N and C terminal were found to be antigenic determined, which has higher potential to trigger immune reaction inside the body, leading to the rejection of the, uh, the, the collagen scaffold. So the traditional method for the production of collagen scaffold are using detergents, where uh, collagen is converted into monomeric collagen, and the polymerization was done using uh, cross-linking agents. The main issue is the cross-linking agent is the traces will be found in the final product, which leads to immune-related immune issues and ultimately causing immune rejection. Uh, in our company, we use supercritical carbon dioxide extraction technology to produce collagen scaffold. And this is the experimental setup, I mean, experimental uh, unit for the production of collagen scaffold. And this is an industrial scale uh, supercritical system where five liter capacity uh, vessel is there. This is the phase diagram of uh, carbon dioxide, where carbon dioxide at the pressure of 73 bar and temperature of 31.2 degrees centigrade, the carbon dioxide uh, goes to a stage called supercritical stage, where it is really uh, unstable and it is efficient to form a liquid. And this liquid can penetrate inside the tissue to break down the tissue and cells and cellular, cellular protein is getting washed off. And the remaining scaffold is used as a collagen scaffold for the tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. And uh, this is a base, based on the inherent nature of the collagen, we can uh, utilize the collagen for the bio collagen scaffold for tissue engineering and regenerative medicine, where, where we can see that uh, there is a N terminal, C terminal, and this is a tropocollagen. Usually, for the uh, use of detergent and uh, pepsin, the cleavage site is N terminal, C terminal. You can see that here it's here. And uh, even supercritical carbon dioxide extraction technology was found to uh, cleave the loose N terminal, C terminal, and keeping the helical part of atlo collagen as a collagen scaffold for the tissue and regenerative medical application. 
and this is comparable to the this atelo collagen is comparable to that of human collagen with no immunogenic reaction or very very small kind of uh, immune reaction which is not seen in the uh, which is not obviously seen in the humans in order to illustrate the theory we just after completion of the extraction using supercritical system we subject that to the sds page where we can see that there is negligible amount of telopeptide. The T telopeptides are N-terminal and C-terminal uh, part of the collagen scaffold. And in case of other uh, company product like Procogen and Pure Coal, we can find a kind of a higher concentration of telopeptide that is N-terminal, C-terminal. And we published this paper in the Biotechnic Journal. Yeah. And uh, Um, we consider supercritical extraction technology as a platform technology. This one. So we consider uh, this supercritical technology as a platform technology to remove the immunogens from the animal tissue. And uh, when we put a, uh, we can use any kind of a tissue from a cow or sheep, horse, we put inside this plat platform technology and the cells are getting removed uh, and we keep the natural collagen scaffold as a biomaterial for human use and organ regeneration. Based upon this, we produced a dental bone graft, dermal matrix, artificial cornea, dental membrane, collagen implant, bone graft, blood vessel, etc. The core value of our, our technology is no chemical residue, minimum rejection. Every tissue and organ can be applied to human and highly bioequivalent. So this is a piece of uh, skin. And after the supercritical process, we can see the cells are completely removed. When we see the collagen scaffold under the scanning electron microscopy, even the uh, smallest strand of collagen is intact and it is preserved so that it will be really helpful for the stem cell to get attached and it helps in the uh, efficient regeneration of the tissue. The advantages of the process is minimally manipulated process. It does not uh, disrupt or break down the natural collagen sc scaffold and uh, no chemical residues, kills bacteria and virus, eco-friendly and can be applied to various tissues and organs and there is no immune rejection. And uh, these are the disadvantages of traditional process, where uh, time and time and space consume, money consuming, atelo collagen can be easily degraded, and uh, as I mentioned, telopeptides are hard to be removed in this process. And cross-linking agents can cause a lot of issues. And collagen reconstruction is by existing technology. There will be no uh, pores are there, so regeneration will be harder in those cases. And these are the tissues and organ scaffold produced using supercritical extraction technology. And uh, this is dermis, cancellous bone, cartilage, tendon, disc, cornea, blood vessel, nerve, ureter, brain. We also produce heart scaffold, liver scaffold, kidney, and bladder. Why we need to have this kind of different scaffold? The most important thing is if you want to regenerate particular tissue, you need to use the exact counterpart. For example, if cornea is getting damaged, you need to use only corneal scaffold. If the skin, skin is getting damaged, you can use only dermis. So the exact counterpart has to be used for the regeneration. Uh, our ultimate goal is to regenerate the whole human body uh, from outside organs like skin and uh, skin, nail, everything, and inside organs like heart and liver. And uh, uh, this is the Cosine bone, uh, I mean skin derived products where collagen matrix used for burn wound, accident wound, diabetic ulcer wound, surgical wound, and the collagen membrane used for dental uh, guided tissue regeneration, guided bone regeneration, and ADM scaffold, uh, acellular dermal matrix scaffold for wound care, hair regeneration, ADM dermal, uh, acellular dermal pa membrane paste for wound care, wrinkle and facial contour adjustment. SL, SLR dermal patch for uh, hernia operations. 
This is a schematic diagram which shows the production of collagen matrix. That is the uh, dermis part of the thing where we use the porcine hide. We subject to supercritical process, and this is the final product. In the scanning electron microscopy, you can see the natural collagen uh, scaffold with the pore, which helps the cells to both inside, reside, and regenerate the whole tissue. And we subject to the animal experimentation where we create a full thickness wound model, pig model, and we suture the collagen matrix to the wound. And after three weeks, there is a complete regeneration where we can see the uh, regenerated tissue here. And uh, after production of the product, we need to go through the characterization process where this is a native porcine skin with the cells in the HE strain and DAPI strains shows in the presence of nucleus. But after supercritical process, complete removal of the cells were found. And mesent trichromes uh, stain uh, shows the presence of protein. And uh, we did the immunostaining of type 1 collagen to show the presence of type 1 collagen alone, where SDS page shows alpha 1 and alpha 2 bands of uh, type 1 collagen. And this is scanning electron microscopy, which shows the natural collagen scaffold with the pores. As I mentioned earlier, it will, it will help in the regeneration process. And in order to check the immune related issues, we did the alpha gal staining, uh, which is a marker for hyperacute rejection. This is a normal uh, porcine tissue, uh, skin tissue where we can see alpha gal staining was there presence. And the final product doesn't show any kind of uh, immune uh, related uh, issues. So, which shows that our product is immune free. And uh, in order to, after completion of the uh, basic uh, testing, it is subjected to the biocompatibility test based upon the regulatory rules, which is uh, ISO 10993. And uh, there are a lot of in vitro and in vivo tests, which was shown here. And our product was found to have passed this, all this kind of a uh, biocompatibility test. And after that, we subject our product to the animal efficacy test. In this test, we need to compare with the predicate device. Predicate device is a similar product which is in the market. So we found that uh, the wound healing was similar to that of uh, the predicate device. And uh, in some case, it is better than the predicate device with less scar formation. And this is a clinical trial, and this is the actual product of the, uh, the collagen matrix, which was produced using supercritical technology. And in the clinical trial, you can see that there is an accident case where we applied a collagen matrix. After two days, it's it starts to absorb inside the wound. And after two, 12 days, you can see the complete uh, healing with less scar formation. So uh, uh, the collagen matrix is recently used in an innovative manner where uh, one of the Indian doctors was found to use our collagen matrix for the glaucoma patients. Glaucoma is a diabetic compl uh, complication where the intraocular pressure was found to be significantly increased. So in order to reduce the intraocular pressure, they create a trap door, uh, trap door to release the pressure. So the healing should be a controlled healing, not uh, uh, immediate healing, which leads to the scar formation. So in this case, the doctor used our product uh, as an innovative product for the for the glaucoma patient and, and he said that our product was found to be an excellent product for this glaucoma treatment. And uh, as you can see that it's a, it's a kind of a, what I mentioned is a trap door uh, for the release of intraocular pressure. So I'll just go directly where our product is getting used. So this is the product which is made from collagen matrix. So this uh, helps for the control healing of the, the trap door where, which was created in the eye to release the intraocular pressure. So this is the schematic diagram which shows the production of uh, atelo collagen solution where porcine hide was subject to slicing, uh, like 0.2 millimeter thickness. And even the, the, this kind of a slicing mechanism is getting patented in our company. 
and subject a super critical process and production of the collagen membrane, which is stronger than the previous product of collagen matrix, which can be sutured and it can stay there for longer time than the collagen matrix. And the scanning electron microscopes shows the, the natural collagen scaffold. The membrane is getting shredded and a freeze mill to form a powder form. And with a mild pepsin digestion, we produce a collagen solution, which is the base for many other products like uh, scar, uh, scar care dressing, scar gel, scar spray. And also we have a series of cosmetic uh, products and also a product called eye mist for uh, dry eyes. So this collagen solution was found to be the base for all these products. So these are the porcine bone derived products where uh, bone granules were grind to form a granules, cut into cubes, stripes, wedges, plugs. And this is a kind of a Lego bone graft where, uh, for example, if a oral cancer patient, a part of a jaw or complete jaw is getting removed, we can make a, uh, we can just cow the bone using a 5 x 6 uh, CNC machine. And a part of a bow jaw or the whole jaw can be replaced using this bone graft. And this is bone graft putty where Uneven bone white can be a bone defect white can be filled using the putty. And this is cartilage graft for the knee cartilage regeneration. So this is the these are the bone graft products, and these are the indications where the bone grafts have been are used. And these are the regulatory approvals where we got the approvals for the selling our product. And uh, because our product was found to be having excellent uh, biocompatibility. U.S. Uh, North Dakota Space Grant Consortium uh, used our product in the space osteopenial studies. So there we can see uh, MG63 cells were found to attach and uh, proliferate very good. Uh, this is how uh, our bone graft is produced. Bones were uh, cut into pieces using mechanical saw, cleaned using ultra ultrasonic both ground into powder powder form, subject to supercritical process, sieved, packed, and gamma sterilized. And this is the final product. And the characterization was done using uh, HNE staining, DAP staining, and mesen trichrome. So where we can see a normal porcine bone with the cells. And after uh, supercritical process, complete removal of the cells was found. And the most important thing is, you can see after the decelerization in the mesen trichrome stain, there is a presence of protein. Uh, this is a key uh, part where other companies use high temperatures tintering, which is they which they use temperature of three hundred degrees centigrade, where the protein uh, protein part is completely burned off. But in our case, protein is completely preserved, so which helps for the regeneration. And the X-ray uh, diffraction study shows that uh, the decelerized porcine bone. Calcium pass plus molar ratio is 1.75. Human bone calcium pass plus uh, ratio is 1.16 to 1.8. So our uh, our product is found to have a good biocompatibility because of the calcium pass plus uh, molar ratio. And uh, this is the residual DNA analysis where 98 percent of the DNA is completely removed, which means completely decelerized. This is across gel electrophoresis. And uh, this is scanning electron microscope of uh, the bone graft, where we can see uh, different types of pores are completely preserved. But however, the other company product like uh, BIOS, where high temperature tintering was used, like approximately 1300 degrees centigrade, the smaller pores are getting fused. So because the micro pores are essential for the body fluids to penetrate, and the pores are also necessary for the uh, bone cells to go attach and proliferate for the regeneration and also for the formation of new blood vessel for the bone growth. And as I mentioned earlier, we need to pass the ISO 10993 biocompatible test and our bone graft product was found to have an excellent quality and which passed the ISO 9, 10993 test. And this is the rabbit osteochondral defect model where we used our bone graft for the bone regeneration. Uh, in 12 weeks and 24 weeks, compared to that of other products, there is a complete regeneration. And this is the 
canine uh, tooth sort socket extraction model where we compared with a bios product and we found to have a good bone regeneration in case of 20 weeks after using our bone graft product compared to bios and uh, after the, the canine after the regeneration of the the jaw and it is subjected to mechanical test by maximum load and uh, the stiffness and it was found to be uh, relatively higher than the bios mora, bios uh, product and this is the very important thing where our bone graft is found to completely integrate with the host and form a new bone. However, the other product, there is a residual bone graft is still there after 24 weeks, which is which is a crucial in case of human usage. Because once you put a bone graft inside your body, it has to regenerate and make your bone, make your bone stronger. So this is a key result for our product. And uh, this shows the complete mineralization. That means the complete bone formation, bone formation is complete compared to the of BIOS product. And uh, this is a clinical trial where uh, they used to fix the orbital bone, which breaks down during the accident case. Uh, so in this case, when the orbital floor is getting broken, your eye socket was found to uh, getting lower and your eyes start to loop down. So in order to prevent that, they use the is our use our bone strips to keep the eyeballs in the same place. So this re, uh, this leads to reconstruction of the orbital floor. And in this case, uh, we used our bone graft along with uh, adipose derived stem cells, where there is a complete uh, integration of the cell with the bone graft. And after integration, we just after seeding, there is a good uh, regeneration of the bone inside. And we put it inside the rat bone defect model. After 24 weeks, we found to have a new bone. So we say that uh, our bone graft has an excellent scaffold that has enhanced the attachment and regeneration of uh, bone using mesenchymal stem cells. And as I mentioned previously, we use five axis CNC machine for the preparation of a Lego bone where uh, it can be used as a, a tailored designed diesel rest bone graft for maxillofacial reconstruction surgery for oral, oral cancer patients and accident patients. And this is a putty uh, development. The, the schematic diagram shows the putty formation. We use bone graft as well as the collagen membrane powder to mix together from a putty. And we studied in the rabbit bone defect model where we can see the complete regeneration with a number of osteoblasts. So, so the, the indications where the bone graft can be used are to fill the bony voids and gaps of the skeletal system, including hand, leg, and pelvis, bone defects due to the surgical removal of bone cancer, bone defect due to infection, bone defect due to congenital anomalies, bone defect due, due to accident injuries, and also in case of osteoporosis. And uh, this is how the bone graft is used in the human case. For example, if there is a uh, tooth decay in your, in your uh, teeth, the teeth is getting removed, bone gran granules were uh, filled in, covered with collagen membrane, uh, suture of the membrane to gingiva, and final suture was complete to, this, uh, to the surgery. We can do it as a multiple teeth or a single teeth can be uh, fixed like in this manner. And after the filling of the bone graft, osteo integration takes place in three to six months and you can make a metal implant and a crown to have a normal teeth. The possible mechanism of bone reg regeneration is uh, we supply the collagen scaffold. The stem cell from the blood recognize the scaffold, comes and attach and regenerates the whole bone. So these are the products under development. And uh, as we know that, according to uh, WHO statistics, 20 million, 20 million people are suffering from corneal blindness. So not many people are willing to donate the tissue, I mean, corneal tissue. And so therefore the demand is too high. So what we do is we collect the pig cornea 
cosine cornea we remove the cornea along with the limbus area we subject to supercritical process after that it, the cells are completely removed and using the technique lamellar corneal transplantation it is subjected to the rabbit and after one year you can see the complete regeneration of the cornea so for the characterization this is a normal cornea where you can find the uh, find the keratocytes here but after the supercritical process the keratocytes are completely removed and uh, there is a 98% of uh, dna clearance was there meaning it's completely decelerized this is across gel electrophoresis where complete removal of the DNA was found. And uh, this is a normal porcine cornea. And this is supercritical process where we can see only the type 1 collagen is here. And in case of Triton Xandred, it's a detergent which is used for the decelerization purpose. But you can see all the cellular proteins present in the Triton Xandred. And even in the Western blot, you can see cellular proteins are present. Uh, the same thing, uh, it's, a, it's a normal, after the isolation, it's a, so you can see that type 1 collagen is present, type 2 collagen is absent, and the presence of residual protein in case of Triton X100. And this is a scanning electron microscope of uh, the cornea. This is a normal, normal uh, porcine cornea, which is the layers of the protein scaffold are completely stacked because of the cells. And this is desolarized, we can see the, only the scaffold. This is a human cornea. So there is a significant uh, structural resemblance between the human cornea and decelerized person cornea. So uh, because the cornea has to be sutured to the eye, so we subject the decelerized cornea for the suture test, which passed the test. And this is a test, this is test done, done to check the transmitters of light. This is a thinner form of cornea and this is a thicker form of cornea. Both uh, pass the test by passing the light through the cornea. And I has already previously mentioned, uh, it has to pass through all the ISO 10993 bicom test. So our cornea passed with the flying colors. So this is the first canine corneal transplantation in the world. Uh, it was done to a, a pet dog called Bunny, Bunny and uh, this was a telecast in uh, Discovery Channel in North America. And we have done the clinical trials in, in Taiwan and uh, hope to receive the Taiwan FDS soon. And also we are preparing to, uh, to make a clinical trial in India. So maybe soon we will just... Uh, start the clinical trial in India with 150 patients to make the product in India. And uh, regarding this product, uh, it's kind of a really, really, what do you say, uh, kind of a cosmetic related to product where ADM collagen scaffold was used. This is for the hair growth and this is for the wrinkle injection. And this diagram shows the schematic diagram where uh, porcine hide thinly sliced, subjected to supercritical process. The membrane is getting uh, powdered to form an ADM scaffold. And from the collagen membrane, atlocollagen solution was prepared and converted to slurry. We mixed together two, these two to form an ADM paste, which is used for the wrinkle and facial contour uh, removing. As you know that <coughs> uh, nude mice doesn't have any hair, but after injection with our ADM particle, after 30 days, there is a significant increase in the hair growth. So we move, move on to the next stage of uh, study where we use C57 BL6 mice. After injection with the ADM scaffold, we found number of hair follicles were increased. Uh, number of the hair, I mean the hair pulp density also increased. So we also combined with PRP to check whether it increases a significant hair uh, follicle. And also in case of uh, ADM paste also al almost have the same kind of uh, effect. So uh, we also study the immuno uh, expression of LEF1 and K17, where LEF1 is a key transcription factor for developing fibroblast, where ADM scaffold was found to increase the, the hair bulb uh, regeneration and follicle regeneration. K17 is for the hair follicle for proliferation. 
and uh, this is the instruction of use for the the higher uh, regeneration of ADM scaffold where we mix with uh, saline or uh, PRP and using vital injector we inject into the humans and we did we did some clinical trial where after uh, injection 30 days later you can see number of R follicles was found to be increased and uh, um, so many people have uh, some kind of a doubt of how it happens and uh, the thing is we try to uh, give some kind of a nourishment to the existing hair follicle. As we know that the hair cycle has a, a three, three phases, anagen phase, catagen phase and telogen phase. Anagen is a two to six years of active growth and the catagen is two to four, uh, four weeks of stop, stop growing and uh, three to five months of uh, telogen phase where follicle reset happens. And again, when we give uh, some kind of a nourishment during this cycle, it, it stimulates the stem cell to make new hair follicle. And we can see that in, the, in this case, a new hair growth was found and uh, the existing hair had a nourishment to the native hair. So this is how it works. And uh, currently uh, the clinical trial is going on in, in Taiwan. Uh, the main mechanism is uh, the formation of new collagen after the injection of ADM particle and uh, angiogenesis was found to increase and there is no inflammation and hair follicles also was found to be increased after the injection of ADM scaffold. So as I mentioned previously, this is a immunostaining where we can see new hair follicle, new collagen and also uh, angiogenesis formation. And this is uh, Sculptra and Bristlein. These are the products. They use HA for the uh, kind of a dermal implant. Uh, but you can see that there is no such uh, things happens inside the other products. And this is for the facial contour and wrinkle reduction. And uh, before ADM, I mean, ADM paste injection and after ADM paste injection, you can see that there is a decrease in the wrinkle. And you can see here also the same thing. And cell therapy. In this case, uh, because we have a product and uh, uh, the possibilities are multiple, where we can, for example, in case of diabetic wound, if the wound is not healing, they can use the stem cell, human stem cell, uh, co culture with the collagen matrix and apply to the human diabetic wound. It can really regenerate the, the wound very fast compared to that of normal wound healing. And in this case, you can see that this is collagen matrix alone and collagen matrix along with human measles Campbell's stem cell, where you can find the hair follicles getting uh, grown, which means that in case of bone patients, if there is a formation of hair follicle, there will be a regulation of temperature, which is essential for the uh, bone wound regeneration. And this is how the cartilage is getting uh, produced. The Porcine uh, femur bone is collected where the condyle part is getting scrapped off the cartilage subjected to the supercritical process and the HEM shows the cartilage without any chondrocytes inside. And uh, this is a nasal septum uh, cartilage. The same thing we collect that and we just subject to supercritical process and the final product is uh, this desulrized porcine uh, nasal cartilage graft. And we, we used to create a kind of a cartilage construct, 3D construct using cartilage graft, PRP and chondrocyte. And uh, we, we created a defect in the porcine bone and we placed the construct inside. And uh, within one month, we can find a complete regeneration of the cartilage. This is the original cartilage and this is a transplant type cartilage. We can find uh, chondrocytes growing uh, really good in, like similar to that of original cartilage. So this shows that our product has an excellent cartilage re reconstruction within one month. And this is a recently published paper where we reconstructed the whole artery uh, with a direct xenotransplantation, where we collected the rabbit femoral artery, subject to supercritical process, desulfurized, transplanted to ACA rat. So this is a characterization of desulfurized artery where we can see uh, this is supercritical process. This is a normal one. We can see the cells. Supercritical, there is completely removal of the cell. And we compare with the SDS, desulfurized femoral artery. 
and where we can see the agarose gel shows no uh, no dna and uh, here after the uh, reconstruction you can find that supercritical process was completely resulterized however the sds desulterized femoral artery shows some kind of uh, clot formation inside the blood vessel which which is uh, related to the immune related issues and also we did some molecular uh, docking studies to show the role of uh, cd34 attaching to the peptides inside the scaffold the uh, this laminin viminitin desmin biglycan integrins these are the uh, peptides present in the supercritical desulfurized scaffold uh, material and we found that uh, there is a significant binding to the cd34 receptor leading to the regeneration after 90 days we also do certain kind of organ engineering like heart liver and kidney and uh, you can see that in this we use a rabbit kidney for this study Uh, we remove the kidney normal ki rabbit kidney we subject that to supercritical process after uh, removal of the cells it was trans transplanted to another healthy rabbit uh, after four weeks we found a kind of a regenerated uh, kidney which produces urine and this is the doctor who conducted the transplantation surgery and this is my boss dr dj and uh, you can see that here after a uh, desulfurization the artery is connecting connected to the blood supply where you can see the blood is pumped through the kidney tubules this shows that our process does not damage even the smallest minute tubules inside the kidney so which is essential for that tissue uh, regeneration and we did uh, some of the markers for the uh, kidney regeneration and we can see that uh, nuclear scan shows the urine formation in the kidney and these are the products for research use uh, we 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 use almost every tissues for the research purpose for example like brain kidney liver pancreas heart whole skin dermis cancellous bone cornea and cartilage and these are the trademarks and brand names and these are the certificates we obtained from different uh, regulatory approvals and this is uh, for the atelo collagen master file and these are the certificates from us fda for collagen matrix bone graft and bone matrix and these are certificates from singapore philippines vietnam thailand and india and these are certificates from taiwan fda for all of our products and these are the awards for our innovative product development using supercritical extraction technology and uh, this is the discovery channel coverage for the corneal transplant in the dog and our story is uh, published in the fortune investor guide in 2021 regarding the heart transplant in the rabbit kidney model and we have a contract signing uh, we license out to oculus biomed uh, biomed in uh, australia and i have a exclusive partnership with marupeni in japan and also we collaborate with the uh, trisoris uh, general hospital in uh, taiwan and we continue to make impossible possible thank you Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shrinivasan, for your wonderful insight on what are the products and what kind of ongoing research that is uh, uh, undergo in your uh, company. Uh, thank you so much again. So the session is open for discussion. Discussion. If you have any questions, you can ask directly. Unmute yourself and ask directly, or you can ask through chat. So one question is there: Is this applicable to neural cell disorders? 
yeah, uh, recently we use a desolarized nerve conduct for a kind of a animal model. Uh, just now we completed the experiment and uh, yeah, it, the research is ongoing now uh, for the reconstruction of no damage like sciatica, something like that. So it will take some time for the product to be for the human use. Thank you, Christopher, yeah, for asking this question. Hope you are satisfied with the answer. And I have one question. Uh, you showed uh, some of the products only for research. So is this researchers can get it from the company directly or they can have a collaboration with you so that you can uh, use? There is a, the possibility is open. You can use it uh, as a collaborative product and you can publish the papers along with us or just buy from us and you can use it as a product alone. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, next question. Samira asks, uh, can we use this for taco subo cardiomyopathy? Uh, I am not familiar with the, the, the familiar with the, the, the condition, heart condition. So the thing is, uh, in some kind in some case, uh, one of the Japanese researchers uh, used our product for the the membrane, the outer membrane of the heart, uh, because for some people the there is accumulation of fluid in in the heart, so they want to remove that. In order to remove that, they need to open the uh, outer membrane of the heart. So once they remove that, they need to again close it. So for that purpose, they use our product for the uh, closure. So, yeah, we need to know what is the exact uh, condition of the particular heart. And if that is possible, maybe we can use some of our product because we use collagen membrane and collagen matrix for this kind of a reconstruction work. Hope you can contact him so that with your further information so that he can discuss with them. I'll share his email address. Next, Dr. Yam Sasi Reka Mani asked the question Have you tried with nanotechnological application? Uh, our company is mainly focusing on the production of natural collagen stuff. We don't need to, we don't want to any mix any of that kind of a nano stuff because uh, our aim is to use our product directly to the humans. So most of the nano products are still now under a kind of a research because. When you go for the ISO regulations, you cannot you cannot explain the nano material with the ISO. So it's it's really really complicated. So what we do is we we keep uh, things simple by using only natural collagen scaffold. Thank you. So the next question is, uh, Dr. K. Shivaraman, uh, who's the assistant professor of geology, knee joint cell therapy. If this is possible in India. Uh, it's possible in India. The thing is, we need to go through the regulatory approval. So, for example, if it is an university hospital, there should be an IRB, Institutional Review Board, and doctors, researchers has to get together to do this kind of a research in humans. Yeah. Animal work, as you know, that ethical, ethical committee has to pass through that. Yeah. Any other questions? I hope no more questions. Uh, I think we can conclude the session. Uh, 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 again, I would like to thank you, Dr. Srinivasan, for your time. On behalf of uh, School of Life Sciences, B.S. Abdurrahman, Presenting of Science and Technology, thank you again for your presence and your wonderful lecture. We are truly honored to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Ashok. Thank you, Dr. Ashok, for your uh, invitation. And it's my, it's my immense pleasure to, to share our research related to the scaffold, biomedical scaffold production. And uh, yeah, I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you so much. The feedback link is shared. Please fill the feedback so that you get the certificate to your email address.
थैंक यू ओके
ಕೊಡದ ರೋಶ್ನಿ ನಕ್ಕ ಸರ್ಟಿಫಿಕೇಟ್ 